Hello, hello everyone. Today's Reinhardt's Rundown is a follow-up of our COPD series and we'll be doing a quick review of patients with COPD, how they describe and present with their number one symptom, which is dyspnea or shortness of breath. Now remember there are three chronic and progressive hallmark symptoms of COPD, dyspnea, cough, and sputum production. Dyspnea, of course, is considered that cardinal symptom and contributes to a lot of the anxiety in COPD patients and also correlates directly to a patient's functional status and degree of disability from their disease. Depending on disease progression, patients might report dyspnea even at rest, or maybe that it's particularly worse during periods of exertion or exercise. The shortness of breath is often described as an increased effort to breathe, that it's more difficult to do so, that they're hungry for air or gasping for air. While others might not report it that way at all, they might simply say that they have a heaviness in their chest. We also know that women tend to experience more shortness of breath compared to men with COPD disease. We also know that the more short of breath a patient is, the higher their associated healthcare costs. We talked about in this series, the order of symptom presentation in COPD patients. For more on that, make sure you check out our Hallmark Symptoms video in the notes below. Now for years, clinicians measured dyspnea and COPD severity with the MMRC, the Modified British Medical Research Council questionnaire. It allows a patient to rate their breathlessness or shortness of breath on a scale of zero to four really easy to use, but now we know that COPD affects more than just shortness of breath. It affects energy level, quality of sleep, ability to manage you know, your activities of daily living, quality of life, and so much more. So really, the better symptom scoring tools are probably one of the COPD assessment tests, like the CAT or the COPD control questionnaire, the CCQ. That's the Reinhardt's Rundown. Subscribe for our next updates. We'll definitely be covering the additional symptoms of COPD. And also, we'll be looking at which symptom scoring tools are the most practical and the easiest to implement as you're tracking your impact with COPD interventions.